Hello, and welcome to another episode with your Autistic Angler. If you haven't done yet, can you please subscribe? And if you want to see any more of my videos, you need to press the notification bell. It will let you know. Thank you. After my last video, I had a comment on Facebook from a gentleman saying that the wish the washing line rig has been used in competition for catching garfish and he said it's made with some crimps and swivels so I'm gonna have a go and this is what I'm going to use to make it with So you need six little swivels, six little beads, six little crimps, and three little hooks, and I'm going to use some fluorocarbon for my snood and I'm using this to make the rig out so I'm going to start off by making the little drop down from the float so we'll start with a little swivel I'm using a uni knot again. So there you go, that's the first swivel on. So now I'm going to just do about six in inches. feed on one of those little crimps then one of the beads then one of the li little swivels then another bead Another crimp. And that's it. And terminate it with another swivel. And this little section is just holding the um, washing line up. So you can crimp that wherever you like. And I thought I'd put it down near the bottom swivel. So there you go. So the um, float will be on the top and the first snood will be dropping off from the bottom. So let's start the washing line <coughs> and I think I'll do it from the tip of my finger to my nose I think that should be long enough so we will start off by tying it into the 
swivel that we've just crimped in. And obviously the beauty with this one is that the snooze can move around the washing line. Whereas on the other one, they were fixed. The only thing I don't like about this one is it's used a lot more furniture, as I call it. You know, tackle. And ultimately a lot more stuff for them to see or things to go wrong or whatever. But I thought I'd give it a go. So, what we now need to do on this line is feed on the components for the snooze that are going to drop down. So, we start off with a crimp. be no nope. helps if you drop them around a bit so that's crimping a bead and a swivel and a bead and a crimp so that will be the bits needed for one drop so now we repeat so another crimp glass is bad I've even got my glasses on and a bead and now that I've dropped a bead somewhere then a swivel then the missing bead Ah, there you go, it's on the floor. Hang on a second. That's a result. But I was going to have to search around in the box for another one. Where are we? And then the prep. And then to stop this all folded off, terminate the end of the washing line in a swivel. And this will be the swivel that's going to connect to your main line. So you could put a clip clip on here or a link or whatever. But I'm using these swivels, I love using swivels to stop tangling and it's the smallest component I've got. So now we've got all those that we now need to crimp in place. And I'm going to do them equidistant, or roughly equidistant. So I get the line, hold it like that, and I know at either of these points where I'm pinching it, that's where the first lot's got to go. But it's only roughly anyway. So that will be where my first swivel wants to be. So we'll crimp that in place. These are just, um, I don't know what you actually call these. These pliers, they're round. They're not round noses, but they're round pliers. A bit like circlip pliers, but whatever. I found them in um, Mrs. B's hobby cupboard. Just don't tell her. No, that's no good. She's listening. And there you go. So that's one crimped. And now we just go halfway between that crimp and what was the main line swivel. And crimp this one in. Like I said, it's not critical at all. But you want it about halfway. And there we go. So all I've got to do now is put the three snoods on. So the reason why at the 
the beginning of this video I crimped that down near the bottom is because when we come along that now means we've got all three swivels that are going to go down with the snoods in roughly the same depth again it's not critical but I want to make sure that I don't put the too long a length on so it doesn't tangle up again so this um, fluorocarbon is four pound fluorocarbon it's what I was using last year and it's very fine and I was using it solely for the, the purpose of doing this so that they hopefully couldn't see the line I uh, don't know what size these hooks are they look about size 6 but these were they came in a, a whole bunch that I bought off of Wish I wasn't really sure of the sizes so in one way this rig is a bit easier to um, put together but it does mean you've got to mess around with crimps but it shows you the other way and like I say this was what the chap said they've been used in on competitions but there's still not much up there about garfish fishing with these um, washi line rigs but I, I wasn't intending to say that it was a new thing or anything right so what I did then I, I don't know if you saw because I did, did that off camera I think so I'm measuring my hook to between the two um, the two drops and then I'm just going to go in a couple of inches and that should mean that they shouldn't catch up now I am using I'm making this one properly today because with all the ones that I've been trialing I've been making out of the um, 50 pound line and that was only for trial because that was one thing he was critical of and it said you shouldn't be making it out of 50 pound line but I was only doing 50 pound line for the video as you can probably see you can't see this fluorocarbon but I didn't want to end up wasting some more 50 pounds so I thought I'd just make Oh, a rig that I could use straight away there was my first error with four pounds smooth you can't pull it tight not too tight because it will break off it is only four pound after all but it's not essential you use fluorocarbon previous to last year I uh, was just using the, the, the lightest um, monofilament I had and I didn't buy this fluorocarbon for this it uh, came to me with a load of fly fishing stuff so there's one snood on I'll, I'll do the other two and then come back to it and there we go then so coming down from the float straight past the um, the washing line is our first snood and I haven't done these as long because I ended up tying the snoods closest together on the washing line but there's your first snood no bling no nothing straight down onto the the hook and then we come out along the washing line and I think there you go I've only done it about a foot so each of my snoods is now less than a foot and there's the next one then across to the last one and off to your main line yeah I don't know what to say I mean obviously it 
they're not going to get they're all going to sit okay I'm just nervous now because of this light line whether or not they're going to tangle anyway but there you go at least you've seen both methods of uh, making the thing but this one I'm going to leave now I'll put it on a big winder and leave it until I actually use it but um, you do need crimps or power gum or stop knots or something here and it's just a lot more fuss than the one I tied with the dropper loops each of their own I guess proof of being in the catching in the in the summer okay that's me done